10.2, Delivery Methods and Practice Sessions. Learning Objectives. Identify the four methods of speech delivery. Evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of each delivery method. Discuss strategies for making speech practice sessions more effective. There are many decisions that must be made during the speech making process. Making informed decisions about delivery can help boost your confidence and manage speaking anxiety. In this section, we will learn some strengths and weaknesses of various delivery methods and how to make the most of your practice sessions. Delivery methods. Different speaking occasions call for different delivery methods. While it may be acceptable to speak from memory in some situations, lengthy notes may be required in others. The four most common delivery methods are impromptu, manuscript, memorized, and extemporaneous. Impromptu delivery. When using impromptu delivery, a speaker has little to no time to prepare for a speech. This means there is little time for research, audience analysis, organizing, and practice. For this reason, impromptu speaking often evokes higher degrees of speaking anxiety than other delivery types. Although impromptu speaking arouses anxiety, it is also a good way to build public speaking skills. Using some of the exercises for managing speaking anxiety that were discussed earlier in this chapter can help a speaker better manage the challenges of impromptu speaking. Only skilled public speakers with much experience are usually able to pull off an impromptu delivery without looking unprepared. Otherwise, a speaker who is very familiar with the subject matter can sometimes be a competent and impromptu speaker because their expertise can compensate for the lack of research and organizing time. When Mark Twain famously said, it usually takes me more than three weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech, he was jokingly pointing out the difficulties of giving a good impromptu speech, essentially saying that there is no such thing as a good impromptu speech, as good speeches take time to prepare. We don't always have the luxury of preparation, though. So when speaking impromptu, be brief, stick to what you know, and avoid rambling. Quickly organize your thoughts into an introduction, body, and conclusion. Try to determine three key ideas that will serve as the basis of your main points. In what situations would impromptu speaking be used? Since we've already started thinking of the similarities between public speaking and conversations, we can clearly see that most of our day-to-day -day interactions involve impromptu speaking. When your roommate asks you what your plans are for the weekend, you don't pull a few note cards out of your back pocket to prompt your response. This type of conversational impromptu speaking isn't anxiety-inducing because we're talking about our lives, experiences, or something we're familiar with. This is also usually the case when we are asked to speak publicly with little to no advance warning. For example, if you are at a public meeting for work and you are representing the public relations department, a colleague may ask you to say a few words about a recent news story involving a public relations misstep of a competing company. In this case, you are being asked to speak on the spot because of your expertise. A competent communicator should anticipate instances like this when they might be called on to speak, so they won't be so surprised. Of course, being caught completely off guard or being asked to comment on something unfamiliar to you creates more anxiety. In such cases, do not pretend to know something you don't, as that may come back to hurt you later. You can usually mention that you don't have the necessary background information at that time, but will follow up later with your comments. Salespeople on home shopping television shows are masters of impromptu speaking. They obviously have sales training, and have built up a repertoire of adjectives and sayings that entice an audience to buy. But they are often speaking impromptu when interacting with a guest on the show or the customers who call in. Their ability to remain, remain animated and fluent in their delivery with little time to prepare comes from much experience. Politicians, lawyers, teachers, journalists, and spokespeople engage in impromptu speaking regularly. Heading. Strengths of Impromptu Delivery 
content delivery are rather content and delivery are spontaneous, which can make the speech more engaging if a speaker's anxiety is under control. It enhances public speaking skills because speakers have to think on their feet. Heading, weaknesses of impromptu delivery. It is typically the most anxiety-inducing delivery method since speakers do not have time to prepare or practice the speech. Speakers may get off topic or ramble if they did not set up some structure to guide them. Speakers may be tempted to overstate or mislead an audience about the extent of their knowledge or expertise if asked to speak about something they aren't familiar with. Heading, Manuscript, manuscript Delivery. Speaking from a written or printed document that contains the entirety of a speech is known as manuscript delivery. Manuscript delivery can be the best choice when a speech has complicated information and or the contents of the speech are going to be quoted or published. Despite the fact that most novice speakers are not going to find themselves in that situation, many are drawn to this delivery method because of the security they feel with having everything they're going to say in front of them. Unfortunately, the security of having every word you want to say at your disposal translates to a poorly delivered and unengaging speech. Even with every word written out, speakers can still have fluency hiccups and verbal fillers as they lose their place in the manuscript or get tripped over their words. Manuscript delivery more, is more engaging and is used through the use of a teleprompter. Almost all politicians who give televised addresses use teleprompters. In figure 10.1, President Obama Obama's teleprompter system, you can see President Obama's teleprompter system. You may not even notice them, as the technology has improved to give the illusion that a speaker is engaged with the audience in delivering a speech from memory. The plexiglass sheets on poles that surround the president during the inauguration and State of the Union addresses are cleverly hidden teleprompters. Even these useful devices can fail. A quick search for teleprompter fail on YouTube, you will see very many examples of politicians and newscasters who probably wish they had a paper backup of their speech. Since most of us will likely not have opportunities to speak using a teleprompter, great care should be taken to ensure that the delivery is effective. To make the delivery seem more natural, print the speech out in a larger than typical font triple space between lines so you can easily find your place. Use heavier than normal paper so it's easy to pick up and turn the pages as needed. And use a portfolio so you can carry the manuscript securely. Strengths of manuscript delivery. Well, the speaker can include precise or complex information such as statistics or quotes. The entire content of the speech is available for reference during the delivery. The speech will be consistent in terms of content and time length, which is beneficial if a speech will be delivered multiple times. Weaknesses of manuscript delivery. Engagement with the audience is challenging because the speaker must constantly reference the manuscript unless a teleprompter is used. The speakers are unable to adapt information to audience reactions since they are confined to the content of the script. Speakers may be tempted to read the entire speech because they didn't practice enough or because they get nervous. Speakers who are able to make eye contact with the audience may still sound like they are reading the speech unless they employ proper vocal variety, pacing, and pauses. Heading, Memorized Delivery. Completely memorizing a speech and delivering it without notes is known as memorized delivery. Some students attempt to memorize their speech because they think it will make them feel more confident to not have to look at their notes. However, when their anxiety level spikes at the beginning of their speech and their mind goes blank for a minute, many admit they should have chosen a different delivery method. When using any of the other delivery methods, speakers still need to rely on their memory. An impromptu speaker must recall facts or experiences related to their topic. Speakers using a manuscript want to have some of their content memorized so they do not read their entire speech to their audience. 
The problem with memorized delivery overall is that it puts too much responsibility on our memory, which we all know from experience is fallible. When memorizing, most people use rote memorization techniques, techniques which entail reading and then reciting something over and over until it is committed to memory. One, one major downfall of this technique is its effect on speaking rate. When we memorize this way, we end up going over the early parts of a speech many more times than the later parts. As you memorize one sentence, you add on another and so on. By the time you're adding on later parts of the speech, you are likely going to speed talk through the earlier parts because you know them by heart at that point. As we'll discuss more later, to prevent bad habits from practice from hurting our speech delivery, speakers should practice a speech the exact way they want to deliver it to their audience. Fast-paced speaking during practice will likely make its way into the actual delivery of the speech. Delivery also suffers when speaking from memory. If the speaker sounds like he or she is reciting the speech, rote memorization tasks that many of us had to do in school have left their mark on our memorized delivery. Being made to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, the preamble to the Constitution, and so on didn't enhance our speaking abilities. I've observed many students whose speeches remind me of the sound of school children flatly going through the motions of reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. It's the going through the motions impression that speakers should want to avoid. Even with much practice, our memories can fail. If you do opt to memorize your delivery, make sure you have several entry points determined so you can pick up at spots other than the very beginning of a speech if you lose your place and have to start again. Memorized delivery is very useful for speakers who are going to be moving around during a speech when carrying notes would be burdensome. Think of the tour guide who showed you around your college campus. As someone who used to give college tours, I can attest to the fact that we all had speeches memorized, which was a good thing. It's already difficult enough to walk backward while facing a group of people and lead them across roads and upstairs. Think about how dangerous it would be if the tour guide were trying to hold on to the reference a stack of note cards at the same time. In summary, I only recommend memorized delivery in cases where the speech is short, only one or two minutes. The speech is personal, like a brief toast, or the speech will be repeated numerous times, like a tour guide spiel. And even in these cases, it may be perfectly fine to have notes. Many students think that their anxiety and or delivery challenges will be fixed if they just memorize their speech, only to find that they are more anxious and have more problems. Strengths of memorized delivery. Speakers can include precise or complex information such as statistics or quotes if they have put the time into memorization. Speakers can directly engage with the audience without worrying about referencing notes. The speech will be consistent in terms of content and time length, which is beneficial if a speech will be delivered multiple times. Weaknesses of memorized delivery. Well, it is the most time-consuming delivery method. Speakers are unable to adapt information to audience reactions since they are confined to the content they memorized. If speakers lose their patience in the speech, they will likely have to start over. Since everything is pre-planned, it is difficult to make the speech content and delivery seem genuine. For example, humor may seem canned or corny. The speech can sound like a recitation if the proper vocal variety and pacing are not used. Heading. Extemporaneous delivery. Extemporaneous delivery entails memorizing the overall structure and main points of a speech and then speaking from keyword, key phrase notes. This delivery mode brings together many of the strengths of the previous three methods. Since you only internalize and memorize the main structure of a speech, you don't have to worry as much about the content and delivery seeming stale. Extemporaneous delivery brings in some of the spontaneity of impromptu delivery, but still allows a speaker to carefully plan the overall structure of a speech and incorporate supporting materials that include key facts, quotations, and paraphrased information. 
You can also more freely adapt your speech to fit various audiences and occasions, since every word and sentence isn't predetermined. This can be especially beneficial when a speech will be delivered multiple times. The many lectures I give in my classes, for example, are good examples of extemporaneous delivery. Even though I presented the basic content of this chapter dozens of times over the years, each presentation has been different because I can vary the examples and amount of elaboration that I add to the core content that I've memorized. For example, I may spend more time discussing speaking anxiety with a class that has expressed more apprehension about public speaking. I also change the example videos I show to connect to ever-changing current events or popular culture. When preparing a speech that you will deliver extemporaneously, you will want to start practicing your speech early and then continue to practice as you revise your content. Investing quality time and effort into the speech outlining process helps with extemporaneous delivery. As you put together your outline, you are already doing the work of internalizing the key structure of your speech. Read parts of your outline aloud as you draft them to help ensure they are written in a way that makes sense and is easy for you, you to deliver. By the time you complete the formal full sentence outline, you should have already internalized much of the key information in your speech. Now, you can begin practicing with the full outline. As you become more comfortable with the content of your full outline, start to convert it into your speaking outline. Take out information that you know well and replace it with a keyword or key phrase that prompts your memory. You'll probably want to leave quotes, facts, and other paraphrased information, including your verbal source citation information on your delivery outline, so you can make sure to include it in your speech. Once you've converted your full outline into your speaking outline, practice it a few more times, making sure to take some time between each practice session so you don't inadvertently start to memorize the speech word for word. The final product should be a confident delivery of a well-organized and structured speech that is conversational and adaptable to various audiences and occasions. The Strengths of Extemporaneous Delivery well, the speech content and delivery appears more spontaneous and natural, making it more conversational, since the speaker is using a keyword key phrase outline. Speakers can include quotes or complex information on their speaking outline for easy reference. Finally, speakers can adapt information and delivery to specific audiences, occasions, and audience reactions, since they are not confined to the content of a manuscript or what they memorized. The Weaknesses of Extemporaneous Delivery Since the speech is so adaptable, it can be difficult to ensure the speech will be the exact same length each time. It is perhaps not the best option when exact wording is expected. Speakers must find a balance between having too much content on their speaking outline, which may cause them to read, and too little content, which may lead to fluency hiccups. Heading Practicing your speech. Practicing a speech is essential, and practice sessions can be more or less useful depending on how you approach them. There are three primary phases to the practice process. In the first phase, you practice as you're working through the ideas and drafting your outline. In the second, you practice for someone and get feedback. In the third, you put the finishing touches on the speech. Start practicing your speech early as you are working through your ideas by reading sections aloud as you draft them into your working outline. This will help you ensure your speech is fluent and sounds good for the audience. Start to envision the audience while you practice and continue to think about them throughout this practicing process. This will help minimize anxiety when you actually have them sitting in front of you. Once you have completed your research and finished a draft of your outline, you will have already practiced your speech several times as you are putting it together. Now you can get feedback on the speech as a whole. You begin to solicit feedback from a trusted source in the second phase of practicing your speech. This is the most important phase of practicing and the one that most speakers do not complete. Beginning speakers may be nervous to practice in front of someone which is to be expected, 
but review the strategies for managing anxiety discussed earlier in this chapter and try to face that anxiety. The more you face it, the less severe it will be. After all, you will have to face a full audience when, you're deli when you deliver the speech. So getting used to speaking in front of someone can only help you at this point. Choose someone who will give you constructive feedback on your speech, not just unconditional praise or criticism. Before you practice for them, explain the assignment or purpose of the speech. When practicing for a classroom speech, you may even want to give the person the assignment guidelines or a feedback sheet that has some things for them to look for. Ask them for feedback on content and delivery. Almost anyone is good at evaluating delivery, but it's more difficult to evaluate content. And in most cases, the content of your speech will be a, will be account for time of your grade or what you will be evaluated on for work than the delivery. Also, begin to time your speech at this point so you can determine if it meets any time limits that you have. In addition to practicing for a trusted source for feedback, you may want to audio or video record your speech. This can be useful because it provides an objective record that you can then compare with the feedback you got from your friend and to your own evaluation of your speech. The most important part of this phase is incorporating the feedback you receive into your speech. If you practice for someone, get feedback, and then don't do anything with the feedback. Then you have wasted your time and theirs. Use the feedback to assess whether or not you met your speaking goals. Was this thesis supported? Was your specific purpose met? Did your speech conform to any limits, time limits that were set? Based on your answers to these questions, you may need to make some changes to your content or delivery. So do not put this part of practicing off to the last minute. Once the content has been revised as needed, draft your speaking outline and move on to the next phase of practice. During the third and final phase of practice, you are putting the finishing touches on your speech. You should be familiar with the content based on your early practice sessions. You have also gotten feedback and incorporated that feedback into your speech. Your practice sessions at this point should recreate as much as possible the conditions in which you will be giving your speech. You should have your speaking outline completed so you can practice with it. It's important to be familiar with the content of your note cards or speaking outline so you will not need to rely on it so much during the actual delivery. You may also want to practice in the type of clothing you will be wearing on speech day. This can be useful if you are wearing something you don't typically wear, a suit, for example. So you can see how it might affect your posture, gestures, and overall comfort level. If possible, at least one practice session in this place will give will be giving the speech can be very helpful, especially if it's a room you are not familiar with. Make sure you are practicing with any visual aids or technology you will use so you can be familiar with it and it doesn't affect your speech fluency. Continue to time each practice round. If you are too short or too long, you will need to go back and adjust your content some more. Always adjust your content to fit the time limit. Do not try to adjust your delivery. Trying to speed talk or stretch things out to make a speech faster or longer is a mistake that will ultimately hurt your delivery, which will hurt your credibility. The overall purpose of this phrase, or rather phase, of practicing is to minimize surprises that might throw you off on speech day. Some do's and don'ts for effective speech practice sessions. First, do start practicing sections of your speech early as you draft your outline. For practice, do practice for someone with feedback. Third, do time yourself once a draft of the speech is completed and adjust the speech as needed to conform to time limits. Fourth, do deliver the speech the way you want it to be delivered when you deliver it for your audience. Use the rate, volume, vocal variety, pauses, and emphasis you plan to use on speech day. Fifth, don't only practice in front of a mirror. Practicing once in front of a mirror can help you gauge your facial expressions and other aspects of delivery, but 
that shouldn't be the only way you practice. Sixth, don't only practice in your head. We have a tendency to go too fast when we practice in our head, and you need to practice saying the words of your speech to help lessen fluency hiccups. Finally, don't practice too much. It's best to practice a few times in the days leading up to the speech, making sure to leave several hours between practice sessions. Practicing too much can lead you to become bored with your content, which could lead to delivery that sounds like a recitation. Key takeaways. The four methods of delivering a speech are impromptu, manuscript, memorized, and extemporaneous delivery. Impromptu delivery evokes higher levels of speaking anxiety because the speaker has little to no time to prepare the speech. However, this method can increase public speaking skills for people who enjoy thinking on their feet. Manuscript delivery entails speaking from a manuscript that contains a word-for-word -word transcript of your speech. This delivery method can be good for speeches that contain complex information that will be published or quoted, but can be challenging because speakers may read their speech, which lessens engagement with the audience. Memorized delivery entails speaking from memory. Speakers with a reliable memory will be able to include specific information and engage the audience freely. This method is the most time-consuming and may come across as a recitation instead of an engaging speech. Extemporaneous delivery entails memorizing the general structure of the speech, not every word, and then delivering the speech from a keyword outline. Finally, practicing your speech should occur in three phases. First, practice as you're drafting the outline to help you process through your speech ideas. Second, practice for someone and get feedback. Use this feedback to make appropriate changes. Third, put the finishing touches on the speech.